Hello and welcome back everyone. Today we're going to do part 3 of U substitution for solving integrals. And today we're going to first look at the integral of tangent x. Now let's recall from pre-calculus and trigonometry that if we have the unit circle and we label our axes with cosine of x and sine of x, we can form a triangle with an angle theta so that we can develop the relationship that tangent of theta which is equal to the opposite over the adjacent And once again, we have a right triangle here. It's easy to see that the opposite here is sine of theta. And our adjacent is cosine of theta. So by definition, we know that tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. So going back, We can now rewrite our integral as the integral of sine of x over cosine of x dx. And we'll see this as a common trend where when we're integrating trigonometric functions, we'll often want to simply write them in terms of sine and cosine so that we can make use of a lot of nice properties from geometry. And in this case, with u substitution, we know that we'll be looking for one to be the derivative of the other. And with this particular problem, sine is the derivative of cosine, and cosine is the derivative of sine. They're only differing by a, a single minus sign. So we recall from differential calculus that the derivative of sine of x cosine of x and the derivative of cosine of x is minus sine of x. So we could potentially start with using sine of x as our u but if you try that you'll see that it will hit a dead end and that would be a good exercise to do on your own but for this problem, we're going to go ahead and make u equal to cosine of x. Now differentiating u, we get du is equal to minus sine of x dx. Now rearranging for dx, we have dx is equal to minus du over sine of x. So plugging back into our integral, we have sine of x divided by u minus du over sine of x, which here is what we're looking for because the sine of x is cancel. And we're left with the integral 1 over u minus du. And we can pull the negative out. And this is one of our basic antiderivative rules that the antiderivative of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value. So our answer is minus the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c 
Now plugging back in for u, we have minus the natural log of cosine of x plus c. And that is our final answer. Now moving on to number two, we're going to look at the integral of x divided by the square root of x squared minus 1 dx. So as we've talked about in previous videos, on these more introductory level u substitutions, we're usually just going to take the inner function, whether it be the inside of a trig function or the inside of a radical or the inside of a polynomial, and we're going to set that equal to u. And we're also looking for something in its derivative. And it's easy through inspection to see that the derivative of 2x excuse me, the derivative of x squared is 2x and the derivative of a constant is 0. So it makes sense that our u would be x squared minus 1. Differentiating u we have 2x dx and we rewrite our dx as du over 2x. Now plugging back in with the integral of x over the square root of u du over 2x our x's cancel and we're left with 1 half the integral of 1 over the square root of u du and we can rewrite this as 1 half the integral of u to the minus 1 half du now using our reverse power rule we know that the antiderivative of this is simply we're going to add 1 to the power and divide the coefficient. So minus 1 half plus 1 is the same as 2 over 2. So we're left with 1 half. So we're going to get 1 half. 1 over 1 half is just 2. U to the 1 half plus c. Now our 2's cancel and then we plug back in for u to find that our final answer is x squared minus 1 to the 1 half plus c and this can be more simply written as the square root of x squared minus 1 plus c. That is our final answer.